Praise the Lord and welcome to Friday Night Alive. We are so excited to be here with you and uh, we pray that you feel the same. We believe tonight, baby, don't we, that God has something special, unique, tailor-made just for those that are watching, either on the live broadcast, the live stream, or on the rebroadcast at there. I like to look at those people as I'm going to watch it when it's good for me, <laughs> which that's all right with us. Amen. Well, how's, how's your week been? Good. Looking forward yeah. to this evening. Ask me how my week has how been. How was your week? Well, my week, let's fast forward to today. I, I was a uh, grandparent today. <laughs> I was babysitting my grand dog. Oh my goodness. And, uh, you know, puppies are interesting when you first get them and you deal with them. They're sleepy, they eat, they sleep, that's pretty much it. But I see him moving out of that phase. <laughs> and I can even liken it to our lives as believers. Yes. There are seasonal changes mm -hmm. that we continually go through. It's not that we I've fully arrived at any particular point, but we continue to go through. So if you don't like the season that you're in, guess what? It'll be over before you know it, mm -hmm. and you'll progress and move on to the next season. Yeah, I've been babysitting, so I, I kind of, I didn't even set my phone to where I wanted it, mm -hmm. so when you start talking, I'll probably noodle on my phone a little okay. bit, but I'm excited about what God's put in your heart. Well, uh, last week we talked about purpose. Yes. And um, this week I found in my heart to follow up that with uh, potential. Potential. Yes. And we are calling it tonight our talk, Full Potential. Full Potential. Yes. Yeah, if you're going to talk about potential, why not just talk about Full, full Throttle pot Potential. Amen. <laughs> and um, I started off by looking up the definition of the word potential. Okay. And it's defined as what you can do but have not yet accomplished. So, oh, say that again. I like that. Uh, the definition of the word potential is what you can do but have not yet accomplished. What you can do but have not yet accomplished. Mm -hmm. I like that. I hear the word hope in there yes. somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, it brought to mind uh, that a couple of weeks ago, we, we were watching a documentary about this uh, protected reef that sits outside uh, Cuba. Okay. And that it, um, in that reef, there are a lot of uh, different species of uh, a fish that are very rare and extinct. And towards the end of the program, they, uh, Based, uh, and they put a picture on there about the biggest uh, um, predatory animal yes. or, or fish in that uh, environment, and that was the great white shark. Yeah, dun 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 dun. <laughs> he is like the the head honcho yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in, the, in the ocean these days. And it how was, appropriate for a story on Cuba, yeah, the head honcho. honcho. <laughs> yes. So. Um, I started looking into that, and, uh, and I learned a few things about the great white shark. It, it's, it is said that it could grow up to 20 feet in length, Ooh. and it can uh, weigh up to 6,600 pounds. That is a big honcho right there. I mean, right I, I was impressed when I saw the size of it when they were televising, you know. 20 that, feet long, yes. 6,600 pounds. Big. Shoo. Full of potential yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and strength. But uh, there is something interesting about it, that if that great white shark, is, when it's born, it's placed in an aquarium okay. or a tank, its growth is stunt, stunted. Stunted. Yes. By that, it stunts its growth, yeah. Yes. By the fact that it can only grow then up to 8 to 10 feet. Interesting. So here we have this uh, uh, shark that is still strong yeah. and powerful, but it cannot grow to its full capacity. Wow. So that's that, interesting. Yeah, that brought to my mind the importance of environment. Okay. Amen. All right. And um, 
you know, it's important uh, in which in, in environment we as believers place ourselves. Uh, okay. And I started thinking also about a seed. And so many times I've heard you preach on seeds. And, and you know, a seed is not as large as a shark. Right. But it's full of potential. Full of potential. When you yes. look at a seed, it in, in that small seed, uh, like I mentioned to you before, uh, there is fruit. Yes. There are trees. And, yes. And, I mean, that seed is full of In power. one little seed. Yes. Yeah. And so many times I've heard you say that with one apple seed, you can grow an orchard. Think about that. You could remove every single apple and apple tree from the face of the planet. But if you have one apple seed, eventually you will replenish the earth with thriving apple trees. Yes. That's the potential of a seed. Mm -hmm. So it, of a thought, of a desire, yeah. of something that you have in your mind tonight. There's nothing that will limit you. Amen. And, and you know, in the day that we're living in, where we're constantly assessing and placing goals and just, you know, from what we eat to, right. to where we spend our time. Right. You know, it's very important that we stop and, you know, and look at, ourselves you know yeah. god has placed great potential in yeah. us you know I, I my favorite scripture is ephesians 3 20 and it says able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or hope for him to yes. do according to the power that works in us in us inside oh, has already been planted inside of you if you're a believer yes it's already there it's automatic uh -huh. So often we look for things to come from the outside when we need to really look at what has been already implanted on yes. the inside of us, yes. what came into us when we received Jesus. Yes. Whole lot. And, <laughs> and how do we how do we reach that that potential that has been placed in us? Because a lot of times, you know, um, we can look even in the scripture in Matthew twenty three. Uh, the scripture talks about a so, uh, a person that was sowing. Yes. And he had some seeds. And the, is this is the parable of the seed and the sower. Yes. Okay. And um, he talks about um, Jesus tells this parable about this uh, sower that placed some seeds in some fertile ground. Yeah. And he reaped a great harvest. Yes, he did. Yes, but in that process, he also talks about. Uh, some seeds that fell in rocks. Yes. And it, different it, environment. Different soil. Yep. It's soil assessment. Oh, very good. <laughs> and uh, and here these these seeds, uh, the the plant or the fruit grew, but it did not grow to its full potential. Yes, because of, of the soil. soil. Yes, and then the third. Uh, it, it, not parable, but example that he gives were other seeds that fell among weeds and thorns. Yes. And he says that those weeds and thorns choked the seeds yes. and the plants and it, you know, just couldn't reach its potential. Same seed, same potential. Full of a potential. But the environment around it, the soil would not permit it to grow and produce what it was intended to produce. And I just want to ask a question. I want to ask a question to those that will watch this program. What is it that you think that God wants to produce in and through your life? Do you think that he wants you to be halfway or half-hearted or produce something that is uh, not productive or useful? Or do you think God God who sits on the throne, God who has implanted his kingdom within you, God that has said now unto him who is able to do a great, exceeding abundantly above all that you'd ever ask, that God, according to the power that is at work in you right now, do you think he wants to produce something cheap and weak and feeble and just barely hanging on? Or do you think that God wants you to be one that is thriving, growing, and producing not only things for your life, but for other people? You see, it starts in your mind. You're going to have to get an image of what do you think 
God, if he could come and stand before you and give you something, what do you think he'd give you? You think he'd give you a broke down car that only two of the tires work and half of the cylinders are firing? Or do you think God would want to give you a Rolls Royce? Come on, somebody. Something that is strong and powerful and efficient and able to stand the test of time. Come on, we don't serve. The Bible says heaven is paved, the streets are paved with gold. Come on, the gates are made of jasper and beryl and great beautiful pricey stones. God is not a cheap God and you should not see yourself in light of what he wants to do with you and the potential that is alive in you. You shouldn't see yourself no matter what your environment has been. God has, you know, there may be people right now in environments, baby, that they can't change right now. Mm -hmm. There may be teenagers that are watching that they don't have enough money to get out of the home. Maybe the home is, is not a good environment, mm -hmm. but let the environment begin in your mind. Yes. See past where you are. Mm -hmm. See yourself one day jumping out of that little confined tank and into the ocean and growing like that 20 foot shark that weighs 6,600 pounds. Mm -hmm. Come on. You, it you, may take a little time, but you got to see it first. Mm -hmm. You got to see it first. It makes me think of, you know, where the word says that if we have faith the mm. size of a mustard seed, again, we're talking about seeds and a mustard seed, they, it's said that it's the smallest of, of things. Tiny. But, Looks yes. like a speck of salt, a, a pepper. But isn't it something that God says if you have faith even that size, you could say to a mountain to move and it would be removed. So again, you know, it's where is that mustard seed and what kind of soil is that mustard seed going to fall? Yes. And, and, and are you willing to develop it? And yes. then, um, you know, I think of the story of Moses where, you know, here uh, God brings the children of Israel out of Egypt and he promises them to take them to the promised land. And here Moses sent uh, 12 spies, right? And in 10 of them came back with a negative report. And two of them came back with a positive report, yes. you know? And here, um, how that negative report from 10 spread out so quickly that really uh, it prevented that whole group of people from entering what God had promised them. God told them, I have already given you the land. Yes. So how important it is for us, the soil that we plant ourselves in, Amen. you know, the people that we surround ourselves with, yes. you know, uh, there's, there's times that we have to do self assessments. Amen. Yeah. And realize that, you know, sometimes where God is taking you young person, you might, you might have to distance yourself from certain people. Make changes. Yes. And, and at, 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 at first, it will, you, you know, you'll find yourself in isolation at times, you know, lonely. But let me tell you something. There's not a time where God will take something away from you that he Amen. is not making room to make, bring something Amen. bigger Amen. into your life. Amen. And I think we are all witnesses of that, that yeah. God, you know, he always rewards us with greater things. Yeah. When change we, is difficult, but change is necessary for you to grow and reach your full potential mm -hmm. in God. Amen. Um, you know, the, the word also t tells the story where Jesus went to visit uh, a, a young uh, a family and there was a young girl that he was told that she had passed away. Mm -hmm. And then when he walked in, uh, the people were crying. They were in distress over her death. But when he said, no, she's not, she's not dead. She's asleep. She's asleep. They started laughing and just, you know, uh, making mockery of her, yes. you know, and uh, 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 of him. And uh, it came to the point where Jesus kindly asked them to leave the room, yep. you know, and, and pretty brash move for him to make right there. Yeah. And, and, and that brought me to a place that, you know, a lot of times, you know, God wants to do something big in, in your life. 
And, and you know, and there's going to be people who are wanting to come along and shrink that yes. that dream, that vision that God yes. has for you. And uh, be strong. You know, take a stand. If Jesus had to some, maybe ask some people out of his life in order to, to bring about that miracle, maybe it's, uh, you know, it comes but to But that us. shows you how powerful doubt can yes. be. Yes. And unbelief can be. Mm-hmm. Faith, you know, going back to that seed, it is, it's not that you need a lot of faith. It's using and harnessing the faith that you already have and allowing that faith to grow and develop and mature in your life where you are. Where you're at, God has given you enough faith to believe your way in it, through it, or out of it, no matter what the situation. And again, some of you may be in situations that you can't quickly make a change, but God can at least give you the ability to imagine your life in a different place, living a different life, singing a different song, Mm -hmm. uh, being motivated by different emotions and feelings out of something that's abusive or draining or or negative in your situation. Now, when it comes to friends, you can begin to make those changes. Mm. Begin to learn to know how to say the word no. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe as a believer, you're being invited or challenged to go to places that aren't healthy or beneficial Mm -hmm. to to where God wants to take you. Learn to say no. And just as they mock Jesus, don't be afraid of a little mocking. Yes. Amen. A little mocking is good. It'll give you an indication that you're doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it'll toughen you up a little bit. It'll allow you to stand to be stronger a little bit. And God will not allow too much to come upon that person mm-hmm. that he will not without with that with that trial or that temptation make a way of escape. Mm-hmm. So it it's making ourselves available to him. Isn't it something that Jeremiah 29, 11 says? For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Yeah. Pla- plans to give you a future and an, ex- and an expected end. Yeah. You know, to prosper you, not harm you. So if God has, has those thoughts about us, we need to, like you've said many times, water that word and how do we water it we water it with our with our the words of our mouth right and there. then declaring them you know that there was a time in my life and this is a little bit of <laughs> part of my testimony that i had you know because you can have family members and they can be sometimes the rocks <laughs> in, 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 your, in shoes. your in your soil <laughs> yeah and then they, they, you know i got married late in life and they they would say, oh, you're never going to get married. You're never going to have children. And listen, I would I would believe the Lord. And, I said, and it came to the point that I said, Lord, unless you send me a man that loves you with all his heart, a man of God, I will stay single. But I believe that you have the husband for me. Right. And, and today you might be single. I don't know why I'm saying this, but stand strong. Amen. In, in, in your or divorced and your confession that God is able he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or hope for him to do and he's a rewarder and restorer Amen. of all things whatever you've lost whatever you've gone yes. through don't look at the rest of your life like, like a prison sentence you got to grind it out and then one day you'll die and go to be with the Lord don't look at your life that way don't allow that mental image to be in your life. Why? Because you'll never reach your full potential if you do. It'll kill you. It'll kill the dream. It'll kill the potential. Come on, open up. I don't care if you're a grandmother right now and you're hearing this for the first time and something's leaping within you. Your best days are not behind you, grandma. They're in front of you. Grandpa, your best days are in front of you. They're not behind you. God, behold, I do a new thing. Won't you see it? Come on. He's doing a new thing, but you're going to have to see it. Amen. Your best days are in front of you, not behind you. And make room for it. Make room for it. Yeah. Make room for it. Um, You know, putting yourself in a position to uh, reach your full potential is developing the soil Mm. of your life. 
uh, it, it is critical that you become everything that God has designed you to be. Yes. I mean, it, it's so important that, you know, that we allow ourselves to to say, you know, he he has this designed me for purpose, yes. for greatness, yes. and I'm going to fulfill that Amen. Th that he has for Amen. me. Amen. Um, Preach on. I, I'm <laughs> loving it. I hope you're receiving because if you're not, I am. Amen. Amen. Um, again, you know, we want to encourage you tonight, you know, that not to give up on your dreams. God has a destiny, a life full of potential and purpose in you. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that the minute that you, that you were created, the word says that from the time that you were created, mm. he knew you. He knew us. Yes. 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 So many times I love that scripture that you talk about. Is it in the book of Psalms? A hundred and is it 139? I believe it's 139. Mm, yes. That where talks, he knit us together in our yes. mother's womb. So he, he knows. And all of our days are written in his yes. book. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah, the good ones, but oh, the good ones, the, the, the rough ones are there, but yes, the good ones are there as well. Yes. All of your days. Yeah. And the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Absolutely. And in his way, he shall delight. Amen. It's, it's, it's a mental shift. More, I just keep feeling this in my heart to keep saying, more than your circumstances changing, it is you that God wants to change and us. And what does he want to change? He wants to change what's be in between our ears. He wants to change our mind, our, our, our thoughts, how we see things. Some people see, some people see circumstances as being a problem, but others see those same circumstances with great potential to do great things. Some people see a pile of rocks. Other people see the pyramids. Which do you see? Some true. people see just a bunch of dirt. Other people see great soil for trees to be implanted. How do you see things tonight? Mm -hmm. Because your potential is dependent upon how you see what is in front of you. Come on. And at times, al allow yourself Excites me. draw people to you, into your life that will speak to you, to bring that will bring you higher, that will yes. bring that will bring out of you those those gifts and those talents Amen. that that God has for you. You know, there there are many times that I remember, um, you know, just as my children with growing up, you know, just um, calling out the things that I believe God had for them. And if you have small children, don't wait till they're in their teenage Amen. years from now. I remember even when my boys were young little boys, I would pray for their wives. Yes. I've been praying for their wives from even from that time. Amen. That you know that God would send them uh, godly women to be their wives. Amen. Yes. And I believe that we serve a faithful God that is faithful to His word. Amen. Amen. He says that you know that He. He would never leave us nor forsake us. So anything that we have put our trust in him, Amen. he hasn't forgotten those things. Amen. He, I, amen. I, I see Nancy Montoya is watching tonight. I want you to know, Nancy, that whatever God has for you, whatever he has for your family, whatever he has for your cousin, listen, it's bigger than we can imagine. Nancy, now unto him, what's that? Nancy's related to me. Oh, really? She is brother and Montoya's oh, daughter. Oh, God bless you, Nancy. <laughs> Thank you for being with us tonight. Well, I just tell you again, God's got great, incredible things for you, your family, and all that concerns your family's lives. Amen. And just, we send a shout out to Brother Montoya. Oh, yes, Brother Montoya. Uh, yes. I love him. <laughs> I complimented his tie one time after he preached. He took it right off of my, his neck and gave it to me. I still have that necktie. Hey, man, I've done that several times. And Nancy's all the way in the West Coast. Uh, all the way in California. California. Our oldest son was just out there in California over the over this past weekend. Yeah. Well, it's I tell you, not only for Nancy, but for others who have watched tonight and will will watch. God has such potential yes. for people, meaning, and what is potential? Does it mean that he takes just what we want and he takes it to the furthest extent? No, he desires to take what he wants 
for our lives. In Psalms, the, the word says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. When you break that down to delight means to make yourself moldable, shapeable, pliable, willing to be molded by him into the person he desires you to be. And then he will implant his desire, what he wants. And then when, so when you're desiring something as a believer, you're seeking the Lord and you're desiring, you you have a desire. You need to know this. That's God's desire that he put within your heart for you to take the faith that he's given you to believe for his dream, his desire for your life to come to pass. And I tell you, that excites me when I realize that every time, because when I know that God has put something in my heart that he wants to happen, I'm like, does God ever want something to happen? Is there anything that could either resist it or stop it from coming to pass? Well, doubt and unbelief can, but the devil can't. Only you and I can if we, if we will not just dare to believe and allow it to blossom and grow to its fullest potential. Amen. I'm talking a lot and you got thirsty. You know, Adis asked me sometimes to, when, when I kind of get on a rant, you know, you didn't take a breath. And then I go back and listen and I'm like, you know, it's just the Holy Spirit that quickens things to my heart and to our heart mm-hmm. to communicate. And we feed off of this. We're strengthened by this. Mm-hmm. You know, to take the limitations off of God to allow him to do in our lives and in yours what he wants. Today, again, I want to say, I I want to encourage you. Find yourself those Joshua and Caleb's, amen, that will have a good, that came back with a good report that will speak things into your lives, amen, that will cause you to reach your full potential in Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scripture that I want to read before we pray is found in in John chapter 15, verse uh, 16. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. You. God does not just want you to be a strong tree in the garden that he has called you to be implanted in, but he wants you to be a tree that bears much fruit. Amen. So we want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, aid us and I come into agreement with those that are watching and those that are watching on the rebroadcast, that their dreams that they feel have been shattered and, and ruined, maybe by sin or mistakes or by people, that God is not a God that gives a promise and then turns around and takes that promise. The Bible declares, and I speak this word over you, that the calling and the gifts of God are without repentance, meaning that whatever God has desired to happen in and for your life, he will never take that back. So no matter what you've done, no matter where you've gone, even if you've been like the prodigal, You can come back and the Father will restore you, put the ring on your finger, the sandals on your feet, and his robe upon your back and declare this son or my daughter that was dead is now alive. We pray your your best blessings to be upon your people. And in Jesus' name, we declare full potential in and through their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, baby, I've had a great time tonight. Before we tell you that we love you and God loves you, I want to encourage you right after the program, go into the description section and there there will be a very simple way for you to consider investing into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. Hey, I always say, if you've gotten something either through this program or another program and it's blessed you, encouraged you, lifted you up, would you consider sowing back and giving back into the ministry? You have a guaranteed promise. Jesus said, given it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, shall God cause men to give unto your bosom. Jesus said it. 
I'm just repeating and declaring it over your life. We pray you have a great rest of your evening and a blessed weekend. And until Monday at 12 noon Eastern, we want you to know that God loves you, we love you, and as always, He, he is, is faithful. faithful.